welcome to our songwriting and uh, sound production and uh, song arrangement stream. Today we have uh, ooh, a lot to share with you and uh, if you play music, if you um, record music, if you play an instrument, this might be very, very valuable for you. Uh, and uh, if you're a fan of Chase the Comet, uh, this, we will, are. <laughs> this will be even more valuable for you because uh, we haven't done this before and we're also super excited. We're going to share some uh, amazing, uh, very, very secret material. Uh, and uh, before we start, check this out. We just got uh, Chase the Comet Essential Masks. Essential items. Essential items. They um, are. Yeah. And uh, uh, the first thing we're going to do, as I said today, we're going to... Uh, introduce you to our song what's wrong with us hopefully you heard it hopefully you like it uh, if you have not we'll uh, give you a chance to listen to the song first and we will also wait for more people to tune in so that uh, they don't miss all the juice what's up Scott oh, hey me yep. okay let's check out our song what's wrong with us from uh, our latest album out of the matrix yes. and well, we even have waiting. a video here for you let me let me see if we can show you the video. And I'm going to use this guy. There we go, guys. Let's do it. Can you see the world?
Um, let me say hello to everybody who has just joined in. Uh, Ryan, Hi everybody. Amber, it's Thank great. Thank you for joining us. Yes, it's great. We have so, so many musicians here joining us. Um, Ed, uh, I see your question. Let me um, talk about it later because I don't want to miss, I don't want to waste a minute of... Uh, um, precious time. Of you guys, precious time. Uh, we want to dive right in. We just listened to our song, What's Wrong With Us. And right now, um, well, let's start the secret first. Um, so, this song was first, It's it first started on uh, February 7th, uh, 2018, uh, when I actually wrote the um, verse. That, that, that was how it started. Uh, and I even have a recording of it on my phone that says exclusive content ex some exclusive content guys this is uh, so um, my my phone recordings usually sound as I'm drunk they're very slow you're we just relaxed yeah but it, that, but this is because you know when you start it's composing just an idea. you see you just want to capture the idea exactly you don't, don't want to lose, lose it, it. Right. yes okay so are you ready so this is the very first recording of this song. So see, I was I not even it. sure, I was not even sure about the lyrics yet, and I just wanted to put that down. Show us the chorus. Um, it's, it's more exciting. Before that, I, I will I will tell something. So I wrote this line about my friend who is in London actually, and I haven't seen her for five years, and I thought, okay, well, this is you know this can be relatable to everybody because you know we all have friends who we uh, haven't seen for a long time, and you know like. We were all busy and we don't have time and I thought, okay, well, you know, this feeling when you really wake up and or maybe you're not even in, in bed yet. I thought, okay, this is something that everybody can relate to. And I thought, okay, whatever, you know, we're going to have a swearing word in this song, but who cares? It's not, you know, it's not going to be on the radio. <laughs> and this is the, this is the um, joy of being an independent artist. You can put, you know, the word fuck. And it's not really even aggressive. So anyway, um, Alex is asking me to show you the chorus because... Because the chorus caught me. I mean, when you just showed this chorus to me, I was like, I was really impressed. Uh, let me, and, uh, let me, let me grab this. Yes. Okay. So the thing with, with the chorus and why it is interesting is because when I initially came up with this melody for the chorus, it was different. Hmm. Yeah, and that, that little note. Yeah, yeah, so you're going to hear it right now, so how it evolved, and of course, you know, this is me playing the guitar, so it's not really, Professional. Know, it's not really professional, yes, you know. Whatever. But, uh, yeah, it was, again, to try to memorize it, probably it's not, oh, there we go, guys. So this is the first transcription of What's Wrong With Us. <laughs> Um, this yes. is what it looks like. This is what it looks like, and uh, those of you who know how to write, how uh, to write songs, who do it, uh, um, you know, regularly, this is, I guess, pretty familiar. Uh, but here, this this is my this is my chord progression here, uh, as you can see, and uh, here I marked the dates in Russian, so it's uh, it's the day after my birthday. Yeah, the day after Alex's birthday, and that was when I wrote the chorus. So it took me more than three weeks to come up with a chorus. Right. After after when I had the verse done. Okay, so let's hear it. You'll see the world. So this is how it sounded in the very beginning, and then um, 
how it actually how it usually works when you write something and then you start improvising and then you you may I have trouble writing a grocery list. Lol. <laughs> Well, my grocery list looks worse than this, believe Seriously. me. <laughs> banana? No, it's not bananas. It's Organic else. bananas. Whatever. Something else. Anyway, so you hear what it uh, sounded like and then... What's wrong with us bridge? Oh, that's different. Nice. Interesting. <laughs> yeah, so, so I have a lot of... Versions. I have a lot of stuff on my phone and sometimes you would come up with a piece and then you would think, okay, so... This is going to be a good bridge for this song, or this is going to be, you know, a good a part of that song, and then it never, it never becomes it never the part. Never works together, yeah. I mean, yeah, and and then you just keep it for for later. Or something else, yep. Yeah, yeah um, and so this is what happens. It's quite, it's quite interesting and fascinating how how you have some musical ideas and pieces, and I do have some musical ideas and pieces, and then when we think of a song, when we think of writing a song, we just put together some of our ideas and sometimes they work out sometimes they just don't match and that's okay too yeah but in most cases it'd be like hey alex i have this i have this cool verse that or i have this cool chorus i have this cool line that i came up with and i'm and i'm giving it to him and there's like no chords no harmonies i just sing like a melody that came to my head and he's like you know what i have this cool riff that i've been playing for like a few days you know let's see if they match and then sometimes we would change the tune sometimes like for example with I've lost my head the the initial chorus was super low right yeah. and Alex said listen I have this cool riff but it's an E major right kind of yeah and then I'm like but I won't be able to sing it that high he's like oh yes <laughs> you <laughs> you will sometimes we all need to challenge ourselves yes hey Gennaro thanks for joining us uh, um, interesting <laughs> Ryan said it's the way to connect with your audience, the occasional swear, especially in this case, right? When you're so fucked up and, and you wake up in the morning or whatever, the the, the moment when yeah, you're so, you're fucked, so up, fucked up, you know, you shouldn't also, drink you no more. You mentioned some, uh, di uh, some differences when you, you, you come up with a song and then when you record it. So for this particular um, song, for this particular example, we kind of increased uh, the, the tempo a little bit because... That's like, right. The way you were singing it on the on the record was a little bit like slower, and uh, here obviously we wanted to make it a little bit not that mellow. It's still mellow, right? But yeah, but it kind of has this move, and this is very important also for you guys. You know who write songs with guitars? Oh, I mean with a with an acoustic guitar, and then you try to like put it in something more substantial, you know, or record it. Uh, it is very important to come up with the right tempo for, for the song because when we play on acoustic, like for me, ninety percent it is so slow. Yeah, it is just but too slow. But at the same time, you don't want to speed it up because when your vocal lines sound like you that moment when you're so fucked up, you know, you yeah. be, it's a different song, it's a different vibe and mood, and you don't want to you don't want to change it that way. That yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. like for example, we had that problem with Happy Baby when. Alex, uh, w when we were trying to make it sound like, you know, like Motorhead, some, because, you know, in the in the lines in uh, Happy Baby, we have, you know, more, more, more Motorhead in my ears. Um, and, and I wanted it to be, you know, like to have that pumping energy. And I was telling him, like, let's make it faster. Let's make it faster. And then I figured out that I'm not even able to pronounce the words. And like in the bridge, I had so many troubles recording it. That um, yeah, this is very important. The tempo. The tempo. Also, the the structure. But what I wanted to talk about is um, I wanted to talk about the the way it sounds because we're not a hip hop band, right? I mean, we play rock music, alternative rock. But with this specific song, we wanted to show the whole. Um, Thing related to you know gadgets, uh, electronic devices, phones, what we are into these days. So the most popular genre in the world these days is rap music, right? So I've decided to play around a little bit with the genre of the song because I thought it would be a good idea just, it is. just to experiment with and uh, that's why we have this um, hip-hop drum kit in the in the song and uh, the whole vibe is a little bit like hip hop ish, so let's yeah. See. It's also a tool for the topic. It's a tool. It's a it's a great word, great great expression. So, um, 
Do you remember how we decided to start with the vocal phone? Like, uh, it sounds like a, a phone it came, call. It came later. The first thing you did, you, you laid down the, the uh, drum section. Yeah. And, and Alex was like, okay, I know you probably are not going to like it. But listen to this. <laughs> and then he played me um, the drums and the, with the bass line. Okay, let's see the... She's gonna play for you guys yeah. right now. So here... Here we have the beginning, uh, apart from the intro. This is how it sounds uh, in the mix, but uh, in the meanwhile... Can you guys hear us well? Can you guys hear Alex well? Because I moved, I moved the camera so that you could see the um, screen as well. And what we're so doing this on the is screen? What the, this is what the drums are playing. As you can hear, we have different layers. A few layers. It's an intro. It's an intro. Beat. I didn't know that we had that percussion in there. Right. So uh, <laughs> I put together uh, a hip hop. That was okay over there. No. Okay. Let, let's. Uh, I'm gonna set it up right here so that you could hear cool. Alex. That's and a cool idea. Let me just. You know what? Let me bring that mug. And in the meantime, uh, I'm gonna answer some of the good comments that we have here, guys. Sorry if we're not uh, reading the comments as we usually do. Uh, it's just because we don't want to get sidetracked. If we use this. <gasps> oh no! Look. We're There we go. Kind of. Yes. Let us know if you guys can hear us or if the sound is muggy. Yeah. Because it's on the mug. Keep us, keep us posted. So, yeah, the beat once again. Um, this is what we have over here. Sounds pretty massive, right? So we have some claps and stuff like that. Now let's listen to the to this fragment with the bass. So this is what the intro sounds without synths, without vocals. But there's no vocals in the intro. But this is basically. I don't know if you can hear that, but uh, I played uh, the live uh, bass, uh, just regular notes, and also I put together some synthesizers. Synthesizers. That's synthesizers. The word. Synthesizers. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I put them together to sound more, more, more massive, like larger. Yeah, and also this is the harmony of the chorus, if you can right, hear it. So right. in the very beginning, I'm only singing a part of the chorus. And right. then we have this intro piece with no vocals, but it's basically the harmony of the chorus, which is uh, how you put a song together, right? And usually Correct. when we write songs, we have a problem. We write a verse and a chorus, and then we're like, we're done. We're done. Yeah, yeah. and then you have to push out the second verse, and then you just play with pieces. Maybe you will eventually, you know, come up with some bridge or, um, you know, a third verse rarely but in general this is what you do and so this is what we did in the very beginning here okay now let's listen to this um, with the keys um, and other synthesizers such a difficult word to me to pronounce let's hear it <laughs> Here we have two instruments as well. One part is playing da 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 da. This is the one part, and the second one plays. Listen to this carefully once again. Sirens, this I don't is, know. Yes, this yeah. is my favorite instrument, and it's a cool synth. Can you guys guess what what other song we used it in? 
also. And in the meantime, I'm going to uh, answer some of the questions here. Sure. Gennaro, yes, this is uh, Alex's name, and uh, when you see it, it's, it says Chase the Comet. Uh, this, is, uh, this was a question about our PayPal. Uh, and uh, Ryan asked, uh, do you mix one instrument family at a time to themselves, all drums together, or one big mix with everything together? Uh, this is the only thing that we do not do, Ryan. We do not mix our songs. Alex works on the arrangement, and we record everything ourselves without... We have um, demos before we go... Uh, to yeah, to yeah, but the, 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 um, the final the mixes uh, are done either by our friend Vasily, who also... Uh, who actually mixed our first album, our second album? But don't reveal, uh, don't reveal another guy. Okay. Yes, I won't. I won't. Just we hold have, on. we have another secret for you guys, but that's for the next time. Gennaro, thank you. Uh, and uh, we had, and Vasily actually joined us right now. Vasily, we're going through the stems. Da da da. I just talked about you. Hope you heard that. Um, Justin, thank you so much. And uh, Chip Cop. Uh, well, hey, <laughs> uh, I'm not sure how we can put your name in a song. That would be kind of weird. Uh, but uh, thank you for watching us. And uh, Alex has something uh, else to show you guys. Yeah. Now we're talking. We're talking finally live guitars, right? We're playing rock before all. So I'm gonna move you here because Alex okay, is gonna last, play some uh, guitar. The last missing element is uh, my guitars. So I didn't want to play like power chords uh, to make it like heavier because that wasn't my goal, that wasn't my idea. I wanted to play something melodic, so I've decided to play this little solo slash tune slash melody. I don't know, can you give me some more room please? Thank you so much. So this is my sound, I'm gonna play it. And this is where I play it. Oops. Uh, yeah. pretty cool to me. I hope you guys like it too. And let's move on to the first verse. Right? Yeah, this is first what verse. we have in the first verse. And actually, just coming back a little bit to the question uh, about the that you asked. You said, how do we come up with this phone intro? We thought... All right. So the intro sounded super cool when Alex created it. So when he was working on the arrangement, Alex's style is to create one piece Completely. to the full extent. Yeah. yeah, like he doesn't he doesn't create the whole song and then uh, gradually put because some people in yeah there. some some, uh, some composers and uh, production guys they they create like a bass line and then they create like a guitar line they create for drums, the full song and yeah, only right. then they put together some keys some electronics and all that but I want to have some fun right away so when I'm like uh, writing a song parts by parts so this is my verse part this is my chorus part this is my bridge part intro and so on and so forth and I want to put it all together all the instruments all the ideas that I can come up with so this is my approach yeah I don't know if it's good or bad. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, no one knows. Whatever, whatever makes us. Whatever works for us. Right. Whatever makes us fun. Whatever makes us happy. Thank you, Nick. Um, Thank you, brother. So, um, well, which songs came together easiest and hardest from beginning to finish product? Hmm, good question. Uh it really depends because sometimes it's just hard to finish writing a song like for example the song out of the matrix we just mm -hmm. oh yes uh, needed to put it together and then um i i had I'd trouble say it was writing. the toughest so far probably 20 toughest. 2020 was kind of hard too cuz it was there because were, i was pushing you i was like 
Like yeah. the fucking lyrics. I yeah, need them. it was it was I need them for the song. almost the end of recording the album last year and I kind of feel felt already, you know, drained. Like I put a lot in this last album out of the Matrix and I like I didn't I didn't even have topics to write about. I mean there's so many things you wanna talk about, but like I I feel a lot of difficulties you know, like putting them into songs, because I don't want to be too preachy. Like, I would love to write a song about veganism, but like, how many of you guys would love to hear that? <laughs> Not too many, I suppose. Right. So, um, anyway, it it really depends. Sometimes it's just hard to write a song. Sometimes it's hard, you know, like with what's wrong with us. We first we recorded it, we wrote it, and at that time we had. Um, we had our drummer and our bassist, but but we didn't really just a drummer, just no, a drummer. No yeah, we didn't really we, we were not really in touch with him, and so we wrote this song without him. And and we re there's no live drums in here, and we didn't even know how to put it out. And so we put it out as a single. And, you know, we kind of got into an argument with him because he was really offended that we did it. Uh, but you know. You can't. Uh, the person in the best. You can't. You can't keep a creative person locked in, like literally. Um, Especially when you have all the options and right. all the opportunities. Right. Um, okay. The so, intro. Uh, the interesting fact. So yeah, this is just the vocal effect on the on the guitar on the vocal and what else? Oh, can you see scene. the world? So here we have vocal, here we have guitar, and here we have a little key, key part, and then we have this slow fade out, which is pretty cool. I love using. Yeah, we song. just wanted to start the song right away because you know Spotify era. Yeah, some, you need to get into sometimes it. Sometimes you want to show the strongest part of the song right away to your listeners, to your audience, because some people just they. Being patient. I, I mean, there's no guarantee they're gonna listen till the till the chorus. So you want That's sometimes right. you want to show the chorus right away from the first seconds. Um, let's move on. So let's move on to the verse. To the verse. To the verse. To the verse. First verse over here. So we have a simple acoustic guitar, like recreating yeah, this just, uh, morning. Uh, Check, you know, the, check this. Vibe. Check this part out. Another huge layering of mine. So we have. I don't know. I don't even know what what it, what it's called. Like tick tick then It's just like I suppose drumsticks playing some different grooves. It's all like walking uh, in the stereo from the left channel to the right channel. If you can hear it. No bass so far, but we have a guitar part over here. And only over here the drums come in slowly and like we we try to create this like cozy, you know. Cozy and cova. Cozy. <laughs> That's right, I never thought about this. Okay, never so mind. Here I'm just playing two chords like this. The continuation of the first verse is going on right here, so let's listen to some more uh, instruments. Check this out, it sounds like a real loving to me. Uh, a complicated song or a complicated, right? Yeah, I think so. Check the check the scratch out. <laughs> it's just when it sounds together with some other instruments, it makes more sense. So, if you remember, I played you the first um, Beatles. 
<laughs> is that Beatles? Beatrice. 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 Just, <laughs> the phone is just too far away from me. Um, so, so yeah, I, I played the first recording of the uh, verse for you guys from my phone. And th that pause was always there. That's how I wrote this song. And I had so many troubles with him. I'm like... Okay, and here there's the pause, and you can you only come in on the guitar when I say, uh, what's the what's the lyrics? Over here. Swapping of tender, and only here you come in with the next chord. And he's like, this doesn't work. This doesn't work. How are we gonna make the pause in the middle of a song? And I'm like, but it has to be there. That's how I kind of like feel it. That's yeah, how that, it just, should be done. This little part is out of the bar, which is I would never come up to, come up with, uh, but this idea because it's not something I would write, I would create. But um, and I after all these years, I can I can um, I can say it's a good idea. Yeah, I mean we we. You know, we usually try to do what's best for the song, but sometimes it's just this idea that... Or for... We have plenty of examples like this when Alex brings something to me and I'm like, I don't like it. Like, even with What's Wrong With Us, this is what I said. I'm like, I like it, but this is not what we do. And then I just kept listening to it and I like... And then he added this th synth and I'm like, I really love this and I want to keep it. But at the same time, like, I felt very controversial. Um, Ryan is asking how... Uh, shifting from how has shifting from a band to a duo changed the writing process? It it hasn't. It's always been us. It w it's always been us. Yeah, and we always kind of knew what to do. And even before Alex started creating, sometimes we want to work with someone else, like Vasily, and sometimes right. we need some help with like orchestra, uh, or orchestral parts, and stuff like that. Sometimes we just want to have some fresh brains and. Um, putting together with some other ideas of ours. Yeah, and that's exactly what happened when we worked on Out of the Matrix. Out of the Matrix, uh, Isn't a Time, uh, and also, what else, uh, The Journey. Uh, 2020. Please, please forgive me, 2020, this, these five songs, I'd say, yeah, and also To Be a little To bit. Be, yeah, so from five, six Russian songs, Rural. we sometimes work some other people, like Vasily. But, yeah. yeah, most of the time... But most of the time, do. I mean, pretty much all of the time, it, it's always been us, just, you know, in, like, in different uh, capacities. Back in the day, Alex wrote lyrics in Russian, uh, and I would do, you know, less songwriting work, but I would just adapt my vocal parts, and I would come up with vocal harmonies, but we're going to show you vocal harmonies a little bit later. Hey, Josh. Hey, Zhenchka, привет! But lately it's been cool because Nika, Nika was writing lots of lyrics, and um, uh, it's just, it takes me just to take a what she wrote and uh, start working on the arrangement because uh, usually she writes like first chorus and first verse and, uh, and sometimes sometimes yeah, I would and I would come up with uh, the harmony the guitar chords myself but sometimes I would just sometimes tell us like, just a melody yeah yeah I would be like hey do you mind you know <laughs> and then he would try to I'm like yeah I like this you know let's keep this and then and then we'll just work on the chords together and then he would start working on the arrangement and you know maybe add something yeah. or you know remove something on the opposite or and also, so also it depends. with all due respect um, we know that you guys love rock music mostly right and metal music and uh, but sometimes we just want to experiment with some other genres we want to try something else we want to find ourselves in some different ideas, different genres, different uh, flows, if you will. So this particular song is uh, something that we never wrote before until until this That's song. right. And also, as we mentioned many times before, genre is a tool. Is a tool. So yeah. it's... And we never knew it's going gonna, it's gonna to come out this well. I mean, yeah. it was just... What, it was an experiment. What was mostly pleasant and surprising, even, you know, like... Very devoted rock fans love this song. Yeah. And uh, like Ruben, for example, that was we really we were actually expecting him to say like, "Okay, I love you guys, but this is not you know really up my alley." But on the opposite, uh, Ruben and uh, many other people who love rock music actually love this song because you know, um, in fact, it's not about genre, right? Yeah. It's about the meaning. It's about the music itself. And uh, we are happy to have you all here, you know, appreciating our versatility and yeah. just appreciating different genres of music. And when you listen to the whole record, to the whole album, 
it's cool to have different songs, right? Right. So one song is like heavy, another one is pumping and like I don't know, fast, melodic, and, and stuff. then another one another is a one ballad. Is like more, yeah, more mellow and yeah. uh, melodic. Thank you, Justin. This is what makes us us. Okay, let's move on. And here we are having a little bridge where Nika is Thank saying, you, Ryan. where Nika is saying, but if they put their phones away. Eight. Right? And have you noticed? Have you noticed this little notification sound? Yay! There we go. It's right here. Right? <laughs> so Who song. noticed? Come on, tell us. Tell us you heard this. Facebook. That's what it is. Second verse. Those little guys. Uh, this is what it sounds all together. Can you can you just play it and then turn off things one by one? I think. A different uh, baking vocal melody, right? That's right. That's check, what check, I was gonna check, check this out. That's what I was gonna show you guys. Let's uh, no no bass, no drums. The first the first verse, uh, uh, the first chorus. Uh, Turn everything off except for the vocals now. Okay. Okay, uh, guys. So uh, I'll leave the guitar. For everybody who uh, is a spy, who is, is, is who is an inspiring singer. Uh, and who does sound production too. This is a very interesting part. So vocal harmonies, uh, this is what makes, uh, you know, this is what makes vocals sound cool. Because if you just record one vocals, it sounds kind of, uh, I mean, like a demo recording. But the, the backing vocals is the shit. I'm telling you, man. Here it is. Hey, the world. So, in fact, it's 
actually more than two voices for because for every voice that you record you have to record the left channel and the right channel this is the minimum you to know make it fatter yeah because what happens is you have a centralized vocal that sounds in the very middle like if you put your headphones on you have a centralized vocal that, that has to be in the very middle and then ideally you have to have three uh, three vocal central tracks. vocals yes so one goes in the middle the other two go in two different ears and then for backing vocals um, you put um, one in your right ear, the other one in your left ear. So this way we have five vocals. So just imagine there's a main vocal and the backing, uh, the backing vocal. So two, right? But three of the main vocals plus two of the backing vocals. That's uh, some equals, maths equals here. Equals five. So you hear five vocals. But in fact, here there's more. And what happens in the arrangement is yeah, when you at least. when you start when you start the song, you start with like with the minimal. Um, not necessarily. Amount this of just, tools. This is just our way. Yeah, this is like the classic way. So you start with the minimum amount of tools, usually, and the more or less. Before Spotify. Work, before Spotify. Yeah, and then you work to like grow it because every time. It's like watching a movie. Just imagine watching a movie. You wanna. So first, uh, like uh, the director introduces us to main to, characters. To three main characters, yeah, right? So and there's then like there's a development more. Development line and stuff. Yeah. But these days it has been changed. Yeah, I mean, there's there's always you know other ways, but this is like the classical way. So you get, first you give, for example, one main vocal and one backing vocal, you know, in the very first chorus. But then the second one, the ear wants for something else, right? So you give one tiny little backing vocal additionally, and it already sounds it's re sounds richer. And sometimes we yeah. don't. Realize it, but we just like our brain still has something to decipher. You know what okay, I mean? So okay, uh, now check out the whole thing all together, knowing this little fact. Uh, do you guys use synths and logic or something else? Logic only. I mean, when I write songs, it's mostly logic. Then when I'm done with the do arrangement, do you use synths and logic? Uh, sometimes yes. Sometimes I use something else like uh, contact, uh, contact yeah. synthesizers. You see, Alex has additional libraries that you know are that can be found online and you know that are updated. Depending on the goal, yeah. Yeah, but also as as far as I remember, Logic has some basic tools. Some amazing tools. ones. Yeah, I mean, do you remember we were writing this song for your dad? Uh, right. I won't survive or whatever it's called. And, right. And uh, I was using the scenes from the from Logic because they were right up to pair. Right. Was well, right. That was what I was looking for. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, you can use the basic uh, libraries that Logic provides. That are pretty cool. Um, and uh, you can also find some additional libraries online. Um, or buy them. Uh, Ryan, were you saying that you composed uh, the instrumental section by section, mm -hmm. writing out a complete verse before moving to the pre-chorus, or one instrument at a time all the way through? Uh, no. The first way. The first way. Yeah, and it, it is not necessarily verse after chorus, then verse. I just want to keep the fun going. Yeah, so That's he would my, just uh, randomly take a piece of song, whatever it is. Like, for example, if I write a, a cool verse and Alex loves it, he's like, oh, I want to work on it. And then he starts working on it, whatever it is. And then we just try yeah. to see when how it not, may evolve. When it's not your first song, when you like wrote a few albums, records, whatever, you wanna stay fresh. You wanna you wanna stay. You wanna stay open-minded. So sometimes you wanna just mess 
with uh, some stru uh, structure parts. Sometimes you want to start with the chorus, sometimes you want to start with the bridge, with the riff, with the solo, just to make it interesting, just not to get bored. And also yeah. sometimes, so this is my little secret, when you have all the instrument instruments put together, like keys, bass, drums, guitars, whatever, and then you keep going on, you already have these parts. And my thing, uh, what I um, do pretty pretty often, I so if there's a scene in the beginning of the song, sometimes I want to put it somewhere else, like in the middle of the song or in the end. So you already have this part, you already have this instrument. So all you need to do is just copy that and put it in the... Or sometimes take this melody and play it on a different it's like instrument. Playing, it's, like, it's like playing Tetris. So if you have already, let's say, this part... Uh, can you show the, the screen, please? So if you have this part, sometimes uh, you just want to repeat it in the end of the song. So it, th this way it would be like intro and outro. So you already have this all together. So all you need to do is just cut it and just copy and paste it and uh, yeah. It's pretty. It's pretty. It's pretty helping and. Yeah, and it's also funny how you can uh, play it with different parts of the song. Like if you guys know our song "Rage Inside," in the very beginning, I sing. Ooh, ah, ooh, ah, ooh, ah, ooh, ah. And then it goes to the third. Uh, to the chorus. drop. Exactly when you can't even recognize it because uh, it's it, the the part it's, itself it's is drop, so it's, different. It's a third chorus. You remember? No, it's not a. Third, it's chorus. third chorus. No, it's yes. like rage inside. Ba -da -da. It, it's this like slow. It's a drop. Sure. Yeah, or whatever, okay, whatever it is. Sorry, guys. We sometimes we can't even we can't even confuse chorus and verse. We always confuse them. I don't know why. In we, Russian, in Russian, in Russian, in English. And in English, we've been doing both, good so far. Both. In the last forty minutes, I think we haven't confused them. We're getting better, guys. Look at us. Oh my goodness. Okay. Um, so another interesting fact about Ryan is saying like playing Tetris exactly like playing Tetris yeah so um, then we had this empty part where I, uh, where I just was playing guitar we all pretend to be someone else online but does it really make us happy no because we understand that lying to every and I was like, Nika, can you take something from your Instagram post, some some description, some ideas, and just put it there? Because when the song is out, it's going to be cool, it's going to be interesting to ask our audience, our listeners, to find this, spe this, post. this specific post yeah, and win something like a show yeah, or a and CD. Actually, somebody did. I yeah? think somebody did find the post and uh, we sent a, but you wrote sent a, a CD. You wrote it from scratch, no? You didn't hear it? No, but I wrote a po I wrote this and then I put it in an Instagram post. Uh, and then cheating, cheating. And then sometime later we uh, we had this little contest like giveaway and you know somebody found this post and uh, it was pretty fun. Yeah, so here Nika is talking about how important it, was it is actually, to be like a real person, a, a real living person. It was actually challenging to uh, to to be able to read this whole thing that I've written in this small in this small gap, you know, to put it in there and not overlap. It, it kind of overlapped in the very end if you listen to it, but uh, we manage. Yeah, the main idea is uh, we don't want to pretend that we are someone else. Like we don't want to fake ourselves on right. socials. We want to be real. If we are happy, we're happy. If we're sad, we're sad. If we have some issues, troubles difficult stages in our life let it be let it, let be. it be let it be no let one, it yeah, be no one is perfect and oh. we're all human beings so Speak. that's the part we all pretend to be someone else online but does it really make us happy no because we understand that lying to everyone won't change it for us so why don't we just live our lives in reality and uh, just check out this bass line I love it it's um, a few seconds before the last chorus is over here. Uh, let me just solo it. So why don't we just live our lives in reality? And also, I love those efforts. 
some drops, you know, some random sounds that if you put them in the mix they sound they sound great. But just separately they're just weird sounds. <laughs> uh, we also have this uh, this funny so why don't we just live our lives? So there's the synth part. Yeah. That's not a synth part, it's a guitar part. Look, listen. It's a very special part because it's not only a guitar part. Okay, um, let's start from the beginning. Our lives in reality. And voices. Yeah, I got you, got you, got you. Let me just bring so back listen. The volume. Guitar and. Uh, There's many different things um, here, and uh, in any song that is has ever been created, except for modern pop. Oh, yeah. <laughs> did I say that? <laughs> it's just it's become so minimal sometimes that um, for me there's really nothing to like un uncover. You know, like Alex and I would both love music that you can you know kind of decipher as I as I've already said you know that that you look into it like oh now that's a part that I haven't heard before now oh I can hear this backing vocals for it and it's so awesome and uh, this is I guess this is how you start perceiving music it's interesting this is what happened to me when I was a kid and I was listening to some of my favorite artists back then uh, I remember not only uh, not only the songs uh, themselves, but some like picking vocal parts, some key parts, and I was like, if I listen to it like 10 or 15 or tw 20 years ago, I'm like, wait a minute, I remember this synth part, or I remember this little solo, but it's like, it's so behind, it's so not in the mix, I mean, for like regular ears, it's so hard to catch it, but somehow your brain managed to catch it and to bring it through the whole uh, bring it for the years and you still remember it and it's just it's just magical I don't know how it works but this is what was happening to me like all my yeah, life yeah but unfortunately you know we have to admit that uh, musicians at some point lose the ability to perceive uh, you know the song the musical uh, composition as a whole because they try to always separate it by parts and they would be like oh I'm not right, sure if I like right. the sound you're going, you know? you're going way too professional and, and sometimes you're losing this emotional component emotional component emotional part because you yeah, it's hard you kinda wanna predict how your audience would react to this song to this specific song but at the same time you want to tell a story and this story has to be like touching has to be meaningful and um, if it's otherwise it makes no sense why make music then but if you know what you want to tell about and talk about in the song and at the same time you still are professional 
you still know. But we love we how to make we it, fall like, in love with the, the stuff way. that we make. Honestly, like this because is because it makes sense for us. It, it it this is one of the best parts. Is you know like ab you fall in love, and I've already said that many times. You fall in love with a song at every step, and then you fall out of love, and you're like, ah, okay. Like the first moment when you write it, you can't stop playing it for the first time. Like you even know, even if it's a demo, even if it's a demo, like a shitty one, and you're like, you still keep listening to this because you yeah, love it. yeah, and then this you you keep you. playing it, and you keep listening to it, and then you're like, okay, whatever, and then you start working on the arrangement. And then you fall in love again, and you're like, okay, so... These are like stages, right? Exactly. And then when you finally record it and mix it, and you, you receive the mixed version from your sound engineer... It's the final stage. And you're like, okay, yeah. I'm gonna come right now. Yeah, it's like orgasm. <laughs> but... Yeah, eventually it all disappears in like... And you have to write new songs. And it's, it's okay. I mean, it's completely okay. <laughs> it's hard to be in love with your song forever. You just wrote it. And then the next stage, you want to share this song with your audience, with just some random people. You just want to... You want to let it go. Exactly. Yeah, and you that, just want to drop it out that's, there. That's where I, our mistake back in the day was. We would always show people uh, the version that is like not ready. Yeah, yeah, we would be like, Demos. okay, so this is going to sound like super awesome, but right now it sounds like this, and people would be like, this is bullshit, guys. <laughs> no, of course they wouldn't say that, but they would be like, oh, okay, well, you know, good luck and all that. But uh, we would already know how cool it will sound in the very end. Right, you know? because when you're working on a demo, you already know what it's gonna like, what's gonna happen in the song when it's mixed. But for for all the other listeners like who are not musicians, it's it's hard to imagine what it's gonna be like when it's done. And you already hear it in your head. Hey, Tony. Thank you, hey, Sarah. Everybody. Uh, so... Yes, I mean, guys, thank you so much for watching this stream before we... Um, tune out, because it's, yeah, it's yeah, already been an out, hour, and we don't... We, we'll, we'll play this song one more time. We and, probably uh, won't have enough time, because we, we're... We will, we will, that's okay, we have, still have four minutes. And, uh, yeah, thank you guys for loving our music, because it matters, it yeah, matters if a lot. You, if it you guys, the whole world. If you guys want to support our craft, and uh, we're actually... Uh, we have recorded a new song... We are going to record another one right after we're done with the stream. Uh, if you want to support us with our music, we have our PayPal listed right there. Um, and uh, um, you can just uh, give us some tips. And um, That would be much we, appreciated. Yeah, we we will really appreciate it. And we can't, wear to, uh, we can't wait to create new music for yeah, you. Yeah, thank you for letting us experiment with genres and still loving and supporting us. Because this is why we create such songs. We are a rock band, but we can... Uh, create a hip hip hop hip hop song, drum and bass song, uh, metal song, pop song, whatever it doesn't matter because we know you support us and you love us. And yeah. this one goes to you. Because you're awesome. This one goes to you. Can you see the one living around?